How's it going guys? This is Luke from Coffee House and today I wanted to talk a little bit about a pour over and a Keurig machine. Keurig is the best selling coffee machine in America and for good reason. You know, it's convenient, it's fast, and uh, I mean overall it's cheap and easy to do. What I have in front of me here are two coffees, the same coffee, brewed from two different methods, both the Keurig and a V60 pour over. Aside from a little bit of kind of foam on top here, the color of these two coffees are very similar. Also the volume of these cups are very similar as well. That's because we used the same parameters for both the pour over and the Keurig machine here. Essentially what we did is we took 20 grams of coffee, both ground at the exact same level, the A2 with the uh, fellow oat here, and we wanted to compare these two methods on a really consistent basis. So on the large setting here, this one outputs 350 grams of water and we put 350 grams of water in here. And while we should regularly brew at a bit higher of a temperature than what this brews at, we, for consistency's sake, brewed at 197 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is what this says that it does in the manual. So what I wanted to do before we explain why, you know, everybody in the specialty coffee community will gatekeep you for using a Keurig. And instead of telling you you know, ultimately Keurigs are bad. You should never use a Keurigs and they're fundamentally worse than a pour over. I wanted to taste these and kind of backtrack and talk about why and what the differences are instead of just telling you without a doubt that a Keurig is worse. What I'm gonna do first is I'm going to go ahead and taste these two coffees and I'm gonna compare the flavor profile and just overall the extraction. So first, I'm gonna actually do the Keurig first. Visually, it seems a hair lighter than the other one, and there's kind of like a nice little foam on top, and we can, we'll get into that a little bit later as to why. But here we go. Okay. And so next, we're gonna go with the pour over here. Cool. So off the bat, um, I'm going to tell you that the pour over is not perfect and that is because we are using the same temperature as here. We're still about 10 degrees lower than we should be, uh, which is not perfectly ideal uh, for, a, for an extraction overall. So if this brewed hotter, we would obviously do that, but we wanted to keep it at a consistent basis. That being said, the coffee on your, the left now, the Keurig coffee, is very, very void of depth, very void of origin, and overall the body is very lackluster. Even though the coffee was freshly ground right here, it still gives you that kind of like pre-ground old coffee taste because it was pushed through so fast, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But this one, even though it was extracted at a lower temperature, you get a bit more body, you get more depth, and you get more of a trace of origin. I can tell roughly where this coffee is coming from. I know that it's a Central American coffee without having to look at the label, but overall this still has acidity, this still has body, this is really great, whereas this one is a lot more bland and it doesn't really carry the same characteristics that this does, even though it was the same dose, the same water temperature, the same output amount, and the same coffee and the same grind. So that being said, these coffees should fundamentally be the same, but the question we wanna to answer today is why? When we brewed these coffees, there was one fundamental difference in them, and that was time of brew. The coffee on the left here is for the pour over. That coffee was brewed at a three minute and one second finish for 350 grams of weight. This took three minutes and one second, and the finish time for the Keurig was 59 seconds. So that being said, this coffee was brewed three times as fast as this coffee. The, the question here is what does that do to the end product when you're pushing water through at a much higher rate? If we were to grind finer on this, it was going to get backed up and we, we saw some things happen when we were testing it. Why does it affect the taste that much? And for that, we use the term extraction. When you're forcing water through the coffee, it is being extracted at a much less efficient rate. 
when you're doing a pour over, you're providing more time for all of the grounds to be extracted properly. So when you go with those low and slow pour over methods, you're able to pull a lot more out of that coffee where you're pushing through this. There's something we talk about in espresso coffee called channeling. Channeling is when the puck, the actual ground coffee puck, loses its integrity and breaks and allows water to directly pass through the puck, not extracting any of the coffee that's in the puck. And what that does is it leaves you with a bland, watery, and quick shot. Similarly to this, you're seeing that happen. You're seeing a lot of channeling because the water jet in this is, the water jet right up here, is piercing through that coffee at a pretty fast rate. The outcome is a much quicker brood, which lends to efficiency, but lends the opposite way to quality. And it being faster, it doesn't allow all of those particulates in the coffee to be dissolved in a proper way. That, that lends to both the color and the taste greatly. Is this something that, that you wanna get into if you're into the specialty coffee market but want something fast? And the answer is fundamentally no, because if you're looking into getting Getting into the specialty coffee market, you're going to be left wanting a lot more with this specific coffee because it takes a lot away from the origin when you're pulling away from that extraction. When you pull away from that extraction, it prevents the coffee from really being able to take out all of those oils, all of the amazing things that make coffee good it's not able to catch up with the speed at which the Keurig is working. Not getting into the environmental impact of Keurigs, we just wanna talk about kind of how the coffee stacks up. When I go back to this coffee, when compared to that one, even as it cools, you're getting a lot more body, a lot more depth, and a lot more sense of origin from this coffee. When you compare the two, I mean, fundamentally, these are very two different cups of coffee. It's really the question of, what do you want to sacrifice for time? Is the two minutes and the effort put forth towards a pour over not going to give you the amount of utility that this does? And I guess that's a question for your own you know, personal use. Do you find utility in a better cup of coffee? And I'm sure that's why you're here is because you're exploring more so how to make a better cup of coffee and you might have questions as to why this doesn't brew that. To simplify, as we talked about, this is too fast and too cold. You know, the temperature is one thing, which obviously doesn't allow all of the coffee particulates to extract, but the real thing is the speed at which this pushes water through. It's not going to be able to brew something of this caliber when you are pushing water through that fast. Further, the filter in here is different. This is a paper filter in the pour over, and this is a mesh filter here and the mesh filter actually will allow more fines to get through and make kind of like a more murky and heavier body coffee. And you can see, uh, as it's almost like a gradient at the bottom, um, it's going to be a little darker, and that's because it's pushing a lot of the fines through to counteract the speed at which this brews. So if this were a paper filter and this were a paper filter, this would be a lot lighter in color than it is now, but since it's a mesh filter, it's allowing more to break through, which makes it more easy to compare these two on a basis of color. I imagine a lot of Keurig users would be disappointed if this had a paper filter in it and it brewed a much lighter color than what a cup of coffee is. It would almost look like a cup of New York breakfast tea. That being said, this coffee here carries that nice color, even a richer and deeper tone than this one although it's brewed with a filter that catches more of those particulates. And that all comes down to time. The more time you have to brew your coffee, the better it's going to be uh, to an extent. You don't want to go too long. But at a three minute time period for brewing, I would say that is ideal for the amount of dose that we were using for these two coffees. Aside from you know all of the things that make a Keurig maybe not the best choice for a home, I think this is the most important one. This is what it comes down to when you explore why I should choose something like this and all of this equipment over something like this, which might be $30 at the store. That being said, I wanna hear more about your thoughts, questions, and concerns about the Keurig versus a pour over in the comments below. And I would like to explore more about this and how this stacks up to other home brewers and all that good stuff. I'm Luke from Coffee House. I thank you guys for tuning in. And I love the engagement we've been getting on videos, but 95% of our viewers are not subscribed, so why don't you hit that subscribe button? It's free, 
And uh, you know we do a lot of awesome giveaways and everything, so we don't want you to miss out on those. That being said, thanks again for tuning in. I'm Luke. I'll talk to you next time.